Hey friends, Pastor Preston is my name. So today I want to talk to you about life. Romans chapter number 8 from verse number 6. It says to be carnally minded is death. Or to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, I know a couple of people have read this, but you really would not take that very seriously. Also in John, Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Right? Also in John 10.10, 10, he says I'm come that you might have life and have it to the full was seen death and life. However, we don't take that life and death seriously because we really cannot practically see people die being buried, right? Or people come alive, you know, just the same way you don't take uh, being born again seriously. That has to do with new life as well. But of course, if it's something that is physical, something you can really notice, someone die and is being buried, maybe you take it, uh, take it very seriously. Hallelujah, glory to God. So think in this light, yeah? The hospital was designed to treat people, right? People's health, to keep them alive, right? And then the church is designed to train people in life or to give life to people, right? By winning people and then to train people in the way of life. However, you don't take the church seriously. You take the hospital seriously because the hospital is very uh, you know, uh, visible to your optical eye. You could relate with your mind to say, yeah, I need to treat myself. You know, so when you feel sick and then you take some one or two few medications, it doesn't work. You run into the hospital because you don't want to joke. But of course, you don't care the same thing about your spiritual life because it doesn't really matter or mean anything to you. So you are very critical with what hospital you go, most especially if you have money, right? But not critical with the word of God that you receive or the trainings of the spirit that you receive of the word of God. So, for example, you are feeling sick and then you take Panadol or pain reliever. And then and then you got relieved. And after a while, maybe the, 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 the feeling came again. And then you took a second time, it came again. Right. The next thing that comes in your mind is, hey, yeah, I'm going to do a test. Right. And see, see exactly what is wrong. And then maybe when they're done, they tell you exactly what is wrong. Place you on a medication or a treatment. And then eventually you are aware. Because you say, no, 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 no. I can't play with my life. I can't joke with my life. I, I want to just go and check exactly what is wrong. I wish you were doing the same thing for your spiritual life. It, it, it would have been making a lot of sense and we would have been going in the right direction in life. Glory to God. But a lot of time, people don't do that. People just uh, don't care about it because it doesn't seem to really relate physically. You can't really see the importance of that spiritual life and toss you joke with it. Listen, on the garden, right, man was deceived and structurally man began to see life in a different light. And then, of course, the things he learned on how to live life changed from that time. And from that time, people began to pass that teachings, that culture, that pattern, right, onto everyone that came into the life. At some point, who edit the culture a little bit. But of course, the ideologies, the basic thing that man needed to work with began to come. And then we had some uh, expressions, right? Uh, with different culture, different from all other culture. However, now in First Peter chapter number one, verse number eight, the Bible told us that we were saved not with silver and gold. However, we were saved from the vain conversation that is passed to us by our fathers. Notice that we were saved from the vain conversation that is passed to us by our fathers. So that was a way we thought. That was a mindset. That was a pattern to which how we see life and responded to life. Right? In Philippians chapter number 2, verse number 5, Paul will say, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Well, you feel that, well, is it not just a mindset? I could choose to have mine. I could choose to do what I like. But scripture tells us, as a man thinketh, so is he. So that means you are how you think. Your life will go how you are thinking. You will not go better. Proverbs chapter number four says, guide your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. So in other words, what, whatever stays in you, the belief system you have, which comes from the information that you receive from wherever you believe that sold them to you will determine how you will go in life. Watch this and see this very carefully. So the decisions that we make, how we will interpret things, how we will think, what we will say, it's a function of the information that we have received as concerning how we should live life. The question is, did you really take out time to investigate the things that you have believed? Did you really take out time to 
cross check check properly if the things you believe or how you are you're living life is how the creator of the world designed that you should live life why are you not critical about that one right but you could be critical with your health because you want to live live long but you forgot to understand that long life does not actually express a great life and it's not about how long you live it's about how well you live so you need to take some time to investigate why do I believe what I believe, right? Why do I think the way I think? I like what Paul will say in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verse number 11. He says, when I was a child, I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. I understood like a child. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. Paul will say, as consigning thinking, we should not be as children, but become as adult, right? How we reason or understand, we should grow to become an adult. So how do you think? Why do you think what you think, right? Even in your field of, of job, the things that you do right is there more that you can learn and become of it so you could really earn better right or become a better what in your profession however in the higher matters which is which comes to our life in christ because i know the lot of thought that comes in your mind is christianity is a religion well christianity is not a religion is a life even though he has religious actions or practice that we do what is religion religion is a certain way that you do certain things okay however it's different from a life a life is what we have okay jesus says the word that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life okay and in that life we have religious actions of saying the things that god will want us to say of the word of god and that's what uh, james chapter number 1 26 was actually trying to express 26 27 glory to god so this is the point learn to become critical first understand the word of god learn how we can read it how we should understand it and then read it and agree with it at least if you don't have proper understanding for which you can read genesis to malachi because we were told in colossians chapter number one that it is a mystery right however the episodes are in simple words if you will understand what it meant at the time he was written and convert it to how it is today maybe using the greek rendering right then you will just be fine you don't need too many uh, expressions however you need a pastor who can guide you definitely right but you need to be critical you just cannot cherry pick things just take things the way uh you know it shows up or what they say and not go and investigate like the Berean christian right for thoroughness for correctness so you can be living your life the way the creator designed you because in ephesians chapter number two verse number 10 it was clear that scripture tells us very straight that we were created in christ and then it says unto good work how we have been designed unto good work so god has designed that we work goodness and goodness is not what this world has defined to be good but what the word of god supplies correctly okay what god does i remember when jesus told that guy who showed up and said good man and then jesus tried to explain and says well no one is good but except uh, god it's clear to understand that what god supplies or give is what is good that's what you find in james chapter number one verse number 17 all right and james chapter number three verse number 17 glory to god now calm down watch how do you think today how do you see life how do you interpret the things that are given to you do you interpret them from christ or you interpret them from this word some one's uh, opinion what was sold to you in this word colossians 2 8 says let no man spoil you by vain deceit traditions and, and, and rudiments of this word okay but not after christ not after christ ephesians chapter number four verse number 20 he says you have no when land christ 23 he says be ye transformed by the renewing of the spirit of your mind romans chapter number 12 verse number two be not conformed to this word but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind listen here romans chapter number eight verse number 14 as many that are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god so are you doing life in the will of god are you doing life in the way the creator designed that you should do life or you came here and then bought in the opinion of men who had satan sold opinions to them to pattern a system for which we, we should live don't forget satan is the prince of the earth because he had hijacked this word and jesus stated very clearly and soundly uh the prince of this world looked at me and found nothing in me can satan look at you and find nothing in you and god look at you and see that you have adjusted your pattern of reasoning just the way he would have taken every decision upon the earth don't tell me well it's not possible and well i'm not god i'm just you man and all that that's why he gave you the holy spirit that's number one number two when jesus showed up in this earth listen and listen well jesus was just like you 
right? So, and he showed up and showed up, gave us an example that we could live like God upon the earth. Every time we sleep, we receive forgiveness from God and then we continue in the practice of righteousness, walking from the word and behaving like God will want us to do. Listen here and listen very well. You know, a lot of time we go to church and then they pray for us and say to the world and say all manner of stuff to us and all that. That's amazing. However, that's not dealing with issues from the root, like you call the root cause analysis. Okay, what was man's primary problem? The way he was thinking changed from the Garden of Eden. And then Christ came to correct that. If we will correct, we will stay with what God has done, then we will live a great life. We'll be, you know, we will live how God will want us to live. Now, so listen here. So blessing people or just helping out is great, but not as great than when you reconfigure an individual, right, to how God would have wanted him by, you know, supplying the word of God into his structure, right, into his operating system, so he can be that system to think like God will want and respond to life from God, and that guy will be a blessed guy. Glory to God. So he says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are all that that he puts in Matthew 5. All that blessed at the strength structure of how man was designed to live even in Matthew 5 still in from from 38 he told you they were to, they told you to think like this but I say this and all that in 48 he now says be ye perfect even as your heavenly father is perfect so live from God think from God act from God just be that individual right that will do the things that the spirit will want so heaven looks at you and he says all right we are well pleased at how you live right don't live like the one who hijacked the system live like the one who originally created the system so heaven can be well pleased with your life glory to God because Jesus is going to come back again and we will stand on the throne of judgment and give account of our life there will be no excuse that will present that will make sense if he doesn't line up with the word of God because in first John 4 verse number 17 it says uh, as he is so are we that, that we will have boldness to stand on, on the day of judgment right it says when we work in love when we work in love right it says we'll have boldness to stand on the day of judgment glory to God if you don't walk in love then you don't know God and walking in love is walking in the word because the word of God demonstrates and explains everything about love so listen here anytime you find yourself trying to behave the way humans had formed you, different from the word of God. Just stop you and say, that is not me. The real me is what the word of God defines. Don't take that temperament crap, you know, to think that, oh, well, or idiosyncrasies, right? To think, well, maybe I just have some behaviors that are unique to my own perspective. You know, that old stuff does not work, right? The word of God is who you are. You are born of the word. You were reborn of the word, recreated in Christ. And what you read in the scriptures is possible with your life. If you will allow God to help you achieve it by paying attention to God's word, praying in the spirit and not joking with fellowshipping with the brethren. Thank you for listening. I hope this brings you a lot of blessing. Share this with someone so we can really bless them and begin to bring sin to the word, begin to bring God's opinion, perspective to the word. Okay. The gospel is not just that religious thing. It is life that corrects the wrong life that the devil had structured the word to go naturally. Think about that. God bless you. I'll see you again next time.